guys, wait, wait, wait. Do you know Wonga.com? Wonga was my friend. Wonga.com was my friend. Like, I used to just say, Wonga, I need this money. Wonga is like, I will give you this money and then you have to pay it all, not even by installments. Guys, if you don't know Wonga.com, if you don't know Caffeine Loan, you don't know the struggle. Honey, I know those companies because I used to knock at their doors and be like, go, 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 go. Welcome to the Thinker Circle. It's a girl queen, the one and the only pretty, of course. As you can see, I'm alone again today because it's another story time. And I just want to say thank you so much to our savvies. Thank you so much for sticking around. And if you are new here, welcome to the royal family. And please don't forget to subscribe, comment, and share with your friends, guys. You know, it just takes two seconds, literally, to just click down below. Subscribe, it's free, mahala. And without wasting time, let's get into the video. You know, guys, this year I'm turning 30, like a big 30. <laughs> so this other day, I was just laying in my bed, just thinking about my life. Girl, I have come a mighty long way. And in this recording, I just wanted to share with you guys where it all began. You have to listen to a story about a rural girl making a living in a global city. So guys, I was born in Mount Fletcher. It's a small town in the Eastern Cape in South Africa. I was actually not brought up there. I was brought up in a rural area called Mahanyaneng. For those who don't know what rural area is, it's a village. And my village is one of the most poor villages in South Africa. Basically growing up, we didn't have any basic resources like school, um, water, um, electricity, library, transport, nothing we 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 had nothing <laughs> but you know i am so grateful of the way i grew up because it has taught me how to be humble in life and it has taught me uh, to appreciate even the little things that i have in my life but anyway let me tell you an interesting story about my school my primary school was built by community members and they used mud bricks to build it. And actually those mud bricks were made by them using their own hands. And some classrooms didn't even have like a proper wall um, to divide like the classrooms. They were just divided by a brown ceiling board. And sometimes you could literally hear what the other teacher was teaching in the other classroom while you listening to your teacher teaching you in this classroom so that was distracting a lot but hey the funny thing is every friday we had to sort of like clean the whole school after classes and so we used to cement the floor using a cow dung literally with your own hands, honey. J, we are kikika. I don't know what is ukukikika in English. Like, guys, tell me, please. Ukukikika in Tony English. Like, sasisindam tase into esriasifa. Anyway, um, it was a struggle sometimes to even get a cow dung, especially if you, there were no cows in your like family, you know? So you, that means you had to make sure that every Thursday night 
or on Friday in the morning, you get a cow dung somewhere because you need a, a fresh cow dung. <laughs> so yeah, we brought cow dung with us every Friday at school and then we'll cement the floor to make it like soft and, um, and sort of remove the dust because you know every time when you sweep, it becomes dusty and that dust was not healthy for, it was not good for our health rather. So yeah. And another thing is we like after school we used to have like chores we know that we as girls have to go by the river and to fetch water I used to carry 20 liters of water on my head a full 20 liters of water and it was it was just fun for us because we were so used to it we we're not even like complaining about it because we didn't have taps we didn't have like pipes or anything better we had to go um, to the river to fetch water and even to cook would cook like on the floor using like woods that we fetch from the mountains and listen my head guys in fact my neck because my neck is supporting my head so this head is so strong because I used to carry everything on my head. I gag. Another thing, oh my God, when it comes to transport, guys, it was a struggle because I think we had to walk approximately 10 kilometers to get to the bus stop where there is like public transport so you had to wake up like very early in the morning around like 4 a.m or 3 a.m honestly um so that you can have like enough time to walk uh, to the bus stop and every time when uh, we see like an airplane crossing uh, like passing by and you just you can't even see it in fact you can just see the smoke line you know and we used to get so excited and we'll be like oh uspateli sweetie somehow we grew up thinking that aeroplanes they just drop sweets for children <laughs> oh my god we'll get so excited it was just funny and exciting at the same time <laughs> after i finished my grade nine i moved to mtata where i did my high school which is like a boarding school and it was good for me but the disadvantage is from primary school we were taught english in our home language how will i be able to speak english if i'm being taught in my home language that is still a struggle in fact because my nephews and nieces just moved to cape town and it's been a struggle honestly because they they cannot even like read like um, an English book because they are used of being taught English in their home language that is just a struggle because we grew up like that as well honey like um, hey it's, it's been real I can tell you <laughs> But anyway, I went to my high school and after I finished my high school, I moved to Cape Town, which is another interesting story. Because when I get to Cape Town, oh my God, I remember I didn't uh, get school because I didn't apply, of course. I didn't apply, I didn't plan to go to Cape Town, but my mom was like, no, you cannot go to I, I was planning to go to Durban to study in Durban. I applied um, at uh, University of KZN. So my mother was like, no, you're still young. Who are you going to live with there? You cannot stay in, uh, you cannot live alone. So she took me to stay with my aunt in Cape Town. So that year, I, I had a gap here, so I had to find a job, obviously, to just keep me busy. I was working at McDonald's, which was good, you know? And it, that was my first job. Mind you, I can't even speak like proper English. I'm like, hey, you ufunani, big bear, big neck. <laughs> I'm like, okay, say, you want Cajun? I'll give you Cajun. Like, I was just using like the simple words because like i was i was so shy i was like my low i had low self-esteem because 
I was coming from like rural areas and a girl here she is in a big city in Cape Town and now I have a job and I'm dealing with white people my goodness how am I gonna deal with this you know but anyway I was working at McDonald's and the following year I I, I applied at UWC and I got enrolled to study nursing. Hmm. Now, the thing is, with nursing, I didn't plan to study nursing, to be honest with you. But you know, when you are desperate, when you're desperate to study and you are desperate to just get done with this and find a proper job so that you can support your family. So what I did is, I was like, it's fine. You know what? I didn't apply for nursing, but here I, I find myself doing nursing. It's fine. I'm just going to do this. And then after that, I'll do masters. I had this planned, you know, I was like, I'm not going to stay this, but I just need to get this degree so that I can get a proper job. So I passed my first year and I did my second year and I filled two moguls, which were uh, major subjects and I had to repeat them. I was like, it's fine, I'll repeat them. I did them again and I felt one. And I think at that time, it's not like I was not serious because um, you know when you are like falling behind, people start making fun of you and thinking that you're just playing games. They, they don't know your background and they just um, think that you're just here and you're just uh, like having fun, you're not serious about life, you're not serious about your studies. I remember some people um, like when I was um, after I dropped out one of my friends told me you know that is still in me because I was like oh this is the way people thought I am and of which people don't know you because uh, they were like oh were you told me got dinero um you know so some people they just look at you and they think you don't you don't want school or you do you're not serious about life things like that you know so i got discouraged by the fact that i was owing a lot of money at varsity and i was i kept failing this one module and i did something that i didn't even like which was this nursing because i was like god i'm trying to push so hard so that i can finish and just like do something else after that but i was desperate to get a degree so that i can get a proper job but unfortunately i had to drop out uh because um of my um, I was I had outstanding fees now that was like a downfall a, a, a big downfall for me and I was like oh my god here's this young girl trying to make a living and you don't even know what's next you know it was yeah it was just like um, very sad but I was like you know what I'm not gonna let my self fall and not pick up the pieces and just be like oh it's fine it's colors in the so what no hell no it's colors in the you will continue either way but now you just need to um find your feet so that you can uh, be able to leave so i had to get a job and uh, i found a job at tfg which is the foshini group things are okay there I was working at TFG, but hey, honey, when you have money, even if it's not enough, you always have more problems. Problems started building up, like Dineo Unengaiki, Dineo has to pay rent, Dineo has to do this and this and this. My goodness, I remember this one time i was hiding from my landlord because i didn't have money for rent i told uh, my friend i was living with i was like let me know when that landlord is not there because she 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 was actually asian she was from china i think and she didn't want us to pay like the money um like do the transaction in the bank she wanted us to she wanted to to actually fetch it and we give her cash so this one time i didn't have enough money i had the um the money but it was not enough so i was still trying to borrow from someone you know 
It was just a struggle. You know when you're living to pay rent and to buy food, but which is not even like proper food to last you for a month. But at that time, I was fortunate enough because I didn't have to like use um, a taxi or like transport to go to work. I was literally just walking like it was 20, 25 minutes walk. Not that long, but yeah, it was um, 20 minutes, I would say. So this one time, it was raining you know when it's pouring you know you know you know that rain guys i'll never forget that day it was raining so bad i had to walk to work i didn't even have like five friends for a taxi because a taxi was like five friends i could just uh, walk like 10 minutes and then get to uh, main road where i could catch a taxi but i didn't even have that five friends i remember that day Oh my god i'm gonna cry i don't want to cry because that day still makes me emotional because the way it was raining i found myself crying i was crying and i was like god why why this this, this i was not born for this i was born for greatness i cannot be walking to work and the rain is just pouring on me like this 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 is not my life i was not born for this that day when i get to work i was wet like nobody's business i like when i'm squeezing my clothes literally guys it was so bad so i asked my supervisor to um go back home i called one of my friends to come fetch me and he came to fetch me and uh, he took me back home to change you know how cape town weather is it just rains and then it stops but for that 15 minutes i was walking guys i was crying you know when you're crying and you just lose hope on life that day i lost hope on life and i was like no you know what it's over for me honestly i can't be living like this so that's when I decided to like apply for a job because at that time I was I actually um, um, I, I applied for another course to to study at UNISA so, so I didn't even afford to pay rent because I was paying UNISA on the other side and I was like studying part-time yeah things were just like not good for me you know but anyway, um, that's when I was like, okay, I need to find a job. I need to find a proper job. Whatever job it is, I need to find something better, you know? That's when I started applying for Emirates. And even at that moment, people were making fun of me. And they were like, really? Do you think Emirates when I Dubai? You know when you apply for something and you you, you you even asking yourself why why am I doing this? Because I know I, I don't qualify. Like who would take me? You know, you when you're doubting yourself. But yeah, I was like, I have to try it. And when when they delayed like telling me if I'm being successful or what, people kept asking me, Oh, tell me what, what um did you get the job at Emirates? I'm like, no, I'm still waiting. And they were like, no, like seriously, do you think that you get it? You're not gonna get it, babe. Like you're just fooling yourself, you know? And I was so scared to be that embarrassed when they hear that, oh no, maybe um, my, 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 my interview was unsuccessful. I was praying so hard and oh, thank God I got the job. You know, like in life, you just need to push hard, honestly. And whatever that you're dreaming of, even if you see that it's impossible for you to get it, you never know. Apply for that job that you don't even qualify for. You don't even know if the person that uh, is like reading your CV would be like, wow, I'm so, I'm so interested to know this person. Let me call them for interview. And then when you get there, you just show them who you are and then they just fall in love with the person that you are not just your cv because you don't have experience when it comes to that particular job so yeah and i moved to dubai so i moved to dubai my life changed i mean a real girl making a living in a global city i travel the world look at me now
Look at me now. Yeah, my mind made it. Yeah. <laughs> Before moving to Dubai, oh my God, the debts that I left home. Guys, wait, wait, wait. Do you know Wonga.com? Wonga was my friend. Wonga.com was my friend. Like, I used to just say, Wonga, I need this money. Wonga is like, I will give you this money and then you have to pay it all, not even by installments. Guys, if you don't know Wonga.com, if you don't know Caffeine Loan, you don't know the struggle. Honey, I know those companies because I used to knock at their doors and be like, go, 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 go. I need some help. But anyway, I moved to Dubai and I was like, you know what? I'll pay everything that I owe everything and i had to make um dirts because um i had to do medicals i had to go see the dentist so even like my mother was trying to borrow some cash so that i can have that money to do all these things emirates needed me to do which was worth it at the end you know because i knew that when i move to dubai i'm gonna be able to pay all those things my life honestly changed for the better and here I am and I'm like, listen, I'm just a rural girl making a living in a global city now. Look at me, I traveled the world. Who knew, who knew? This, this is a huge achievement, achievement for me. This is a big deal. And if you think about where I come from, from the concrete jungle to Dubai, like, you know, Oh man, it just makes me emotional. Mm. Wait, I need to breathe. But anyway, you know, um, ever since I moved to Dubai, I have managed to do so many stuff for myself and for my family, which I'm really grateful of. I managed to build my, my, my parents' home. I managed to renovate everything. So I'm really grateful for this opportunity. And this is where God wanted me to be at when everything didn't make sense because like honestly for me when i dropped out from school i thought my life is over and god was like you don't know yet and you know i believe that everything happens for a reason because at that time nothing made sense for me i was like god why is this happening to me when i'm trying to be a good girl and do all these things and work hard you know and study hard but still i feel this module but god was like this is not for you dinero i know where you are meant to be so everything at the time didn't make sense but god because god wanted to put me somewhere else somewhere where it's better for me you know so i'm really i'm really really grateful because he put me in this position so that I can learn something about life and so that I can bring change to someone's life, whether by doing something for them or whether by just them looking at me and saying, Dino made it. Why? Why not me? I can make it. It's possible for me as well. So I want to encourage you today that do not give up on your dreams. Do not lose that hope. Never, ever, ever, ever give up in your dreams because everything is possible with God. I mean, even with me now, I haven't given up on school. I am graduating in a few months time, which I'm so proud of because now I had to do school and work at the same time. But because I know that God put me in this journey to do it this way, I will do it and I will push. I'm not giving up on school because Zang and I'm life in. Hi, Zang, yeah. So I was like, I'm not giving up on school. Just because I'm a flight attendant now, that doesn't mean I have to put school aside. I have to do them together because I know what I want in life and I'm going to push hard and I will finish it. Like I'm so proud of myself to sit here and say, I did my three years um, of studying Imagine studying in South Africa and working in Dubai. I have to come to, to South Africa to, 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 to write exams and I'm working on the other side, which is, that is story for another day. I'll tell you about it some other day. But I just wanna encourage you 
to stay positive at all times and to never lose hope even if you didn't get the job that you applied for remember that your time is coming and whatever that god has um planned for your life it will happen you just need to keep pushing until you find something that you were born for even if you didn't get school you were doing metric last year stay hopefully stay um positive you will get the the course that you you want to study and even if you are studying something that you don't like do not waste your time honey like if you want to change that course go for it don't be scared and think oh my god i'm delaying time what if um uh, now i have i have wasted my time doing this for two years sometimes people even waste four years and study the whole degree finish it and start afresh again it happens so if you feel like you want to change your course change it my love it's fine because you will do something that you love you'll do something that you have passion for it but yeah let me stop right here i think i have talked too much so i need to take a break and i hope you guys have enjoyed this video and i just want to say honestly don't lose hope never ever ever lose hope even if things are so difficult in life right now keep pushing keep working hard for what you want and yeah don't forget to subscribe and tell me if you have enjoyed this video and i'll see you on the next video ciao ciao